as I'm sure a lot of you guys are aware already, there was a change to the Roosevelt Elk Herds in the Hunter Classic that basically made it so bulls and cows mix into the herds a lot more often. In the past you would get herds of say 5 bulls or 6 cows. There was one years ago that would be 1 bull and like 4 cows, but as far as I'm aware that hasn't been a thing for a very long time and this update has made it so that say if you hear a cow elk call in the distance, it's no longer something you can ignore. There may be a bull hanging out with it. and. We streamed this a couple of weeks ago on Twitch. It seemed like Redfeather has gotten maybe an overhaul as to where the elk are spawning. Maybe it was just really good luck. But we had a bunch of bull elk and I wanted to come back out here today and go for another hunt. On that stream hunt we had the cable back bow which is kind of loud. So we grabbed the snake bite. As far as I'm aware still the quietest bow in the game. And I wanted to see if that would kind of help us out and just see if we can find any big ones out here on Redfeather today. And what a start. A really nice bull elk coming in 335 to 380. It may well end up being the biggest elk since the change right off the bat here. Seems to be a solo as well, which uh, at the very least means bringing the cable back bow would have not mattered here. But the reason again that I wanted to go with the snake bite is that if we're not in an ideal situation, maybe we can't even see all the elk coming in yet. I want to have the snake bite to maybe take one down silently and have the others continue to come in, but I don't know, back times are a little wonky, he's got a sticker there. It's gonna hurt his overall score, but definitely a good bull. Hard shot at 14 meters, 367, and he's easily, easily 375, 380 frame with the deductions he has. That is already the biggest elk we've shot since they changed things around, and I don't know. Could it have happened on Redfeather before the change? Of course. But for quite some time on Redfeather, I've just felt like I don't encounter very many elk anymore, and definitely not as many big bulls, so that is encouraging right off the start here. Hopefully not our best one by the end, but not half bad. And again, you can see that sticker. The first back tine on his left side is way taller than this one. I mean, that was a, a really good frame, and still at 367 a really good elk but it seems to be an elk thing so often we have one of our better elk that we take a trophy shot of really early in the morning and it's lacking any kind of decent lighting but yeah like i said hopefully we can get another one a little later in the hunt that even tops that and we're straight into another nice bull 245 to 290 for that guy pretty good weight estimate as well and maybe depending on how things go a chance to see the snake bite kind of gain us a extra harvest. Now, I don't see any other elk. I'm not sure if the herd sizes are any different. Maybe sometimes they do just travel in threes. Before this guy gets to where the tree on our right is going to be in the way, we'll try to get a long shot in there. Honestly, I couldn't have made that shot with the cable back bow like he wouldn't have dropped. But had we been able to drop him, these guys were far enough away to not hear it. But other than whatever they're doing they're running into each other. This is a little bit of the new thing, and I don't mean submarine elk, whatever that bull is doing. You just get cows and bulls kind of mixed together, and I do like it. There's another one over there. A, a lot of the times, you hear that call, and you just keep on walking because you know there's no bulls with it. Now, just the mere fact that there can be bulls traveling with them, it makes every elk call more interesting, and what I think it does is that when you're walking through and you know maybe you're an hour into the hunt and you've kind of gotten through that initial bunch of things that you tend to run into towards the beginning because basically every herd of elk is going to have some bulls and cows and it's not a hundred percent of them you're just more likely to run into bulls a little more consistently you're not going to get you know say two herds of cows in a row where you might go 45 minutes or an hour without running into a bull. Now because there may be bulls with those cows, you call in those herds and hopefully you find the bulls in there too. I just think maybe it's not as many bulls, but you're going to be seeing bulls and I think that makes it more interesting. In the meantime though, we've got elk number four in this herd. And like I said, I'm not sure about the herd numbers. So what I wanna do is drop that guy and then just kinda sit here a minute. See if there is a fifth one maybe way back there or anything like that and I mean worst case we have four elk to go pick up and move on 
Well, I can't imagine that guy has anything to do with the other herd, because he's coming in from behind us. If that's the case, he's another solo bull, but... I mean, we'll take it. it. It gives us an opportunity to take down bull number five. I am actually considering taking him with the gun, because I want to fast travel. I don't know, though. <laughs> There's a chance by the time we get everything claimed, there might be another one calling. So let's, let's take him with the bow, too. Just to be safe. No need to worry about bad shots nearly as much using the snake bite over the cable back. And I've really been enjoying the cable back. I'm a little over a third of the way there to 1,000 harvest now, but... Primarily what I'm doing is sitting in tree stands and taking really close range shots that are high percentage shots just to not have to track stuff. And I've really been enjoying that, but it's nice to get away from that and have some range, have some confidence beyond like 15 meters. And uh, I mean, clearly it's working well here with all these guys. None of those were all that special. 211 there. I'm going to say maybe 280 for that guy in the back. And then our cow here, too, at 7 meters. We're kind of lucky we got that shot off. We'll see what this guy is, and then I think we will fast travel to another spot, especially having shot 5 elk in this one area. 277 for him. Not too bad. I mean, I would say two big frame bull elk on red feather prior to this update in 23 minutes probably wouldn't happen all that often. So an effective fast travel in that... We at least have a bull coming in. As far as I'm aware, it's the only bull. There's a couple of cows under the stand already, but not the most impressive bull. Something, I think, is moving right up in there. There is a, another bull up there. Now that, kind of like before, shouldn't be associated with this herd, so maybe there's more than one? I don't even know where all these bulls are coming from. There's another coming from up on the hill. That little guy, I don't have a clue where he came from. Lots of elk in here. I want to show this spot on the map in case anybody wants to check it out. It's this tiny little lake up here in the northeast. I'm afraid to shoot. Yeah, there's another elk up there. Looks to be a smaller bull, but I guess we'll hang out. It's a good thing we have a tree stand here. The only downside here is when we shoot one of these, the snake bite's not that quiet. Everything is going to take off, but all in all, I still think what was like the third bull here is the best. I'm not even 100% sure that everything's here, but I think it's time we take that shot and, and get moving. I mean, they more or less scattered every direction. It's going to be tough. We can't fast travel for 30 minutes, because one solution would be fast travel here and just go kind of north of here. I don't know. We'll get our one bull and make a decision. I think we're going to have to try to get out and around. The other maybe important thing is going to be click on all these tracks because we know the bulls aren't very big. So if we can have rediscovered trails for future bugles, that'll kind of let us know maybe to not call them in. I kind of had a feeling this might happen. We had a new bull kind of to our north, but these are ones that were coming into the tree stand and I don't know what else to do other than try to at least get the one that's further up the hill and kind of hope nothing flees towards the new ones. I think we did a decent enough job of picking up tracks that we wouldn't have had two new trails from different bulls up here. I think they are completely separate ones, but it's tough. Everything seems to have stopped up here. Just trying to get them in is a bit of a challenge. There's a cow coming down here as well. and. It may be with those bulls, it may not be, it's kind of hard to say. And especially considering we can't see anything, and we know it's going to come in. There's a bull to the left that's not that big. I think we take this shot and hope for the best. I just... Ah, and of course it took a step. So that's going to... Oh, we hit it in the spine. It was so close to being a drop shot. That's going to mess with things, I guess... That's, that's one from the tree stand, so we can leave that go. I guess we just go up here and look for tracks. A bit unfortunate, but assuming there was a bigger bull in the back, we kind of would have had to drop the cow to have any chance of seeing it. And by the way, perhaps I should say, it is a great problem to have compared to what I feel like we got used to with Red Feather prior to this update. At least for me, I often struggle to find nearly this amount of elk. 
and an hour in, we're just covered up in him constantly. I think we might have made the right move. So we fast traveled away from all the chaos up there in the mountains. And we have another big bull, 320 to 365 coming in. There's a number of cows down there to the right. I don't even know if there's another bull, but I think the move is to try to get a shot off. Kind of through the brush, he sees us. Rushed that, but definitely did not want him getting away. Three cows running off down there. I don't see a fifth anywhere, so maybe that was the only one. I I don't even think that was a lung shot, to be 100% honest. It was not. So I guess we'll just kind of sit here for maybe 15 minutes. We can go over to this tower and, and try to call stuff in and then come back to this, maybe. It ended up kind of working out to just wait this one out. A bunch of cows walking around from the same herd, and actually he died just outside the reserve, so we'll grab him real quick. 462 kg, 332, so kind of at the lower end. I did see at least one deduction there, plus his back tines once again aren't even. But not too bad, that's our third kind of big frame, second over 300. And uh, I'm not even sure where to go from here. Maybe kind of up into this area a little bit? So just a brief break in our hunt for bull elk with a pretty good whitetail buck. I decided to fast travel again just to kind of get into closer to that area where I wanted to basically end our hunt. And had a nice buck coming in, but I basically want to walk up through here and just sort of see if we get any more elk. It is after 9 in game, so there's a fair chance any elk we encounter could be sleeping by now, but 161 always decent and... Even as we've gotten our 200, I continue to basically call in every white-tailed buck I hear, whether it's a force of habit or just hope that we can find another one. But, uh, yeah, 161's a nice little bonus kill. For just a moment there, I thought that one might have been a bit bigger. He's got solid bag tines for that frame, but he appears to be a bull among a bunch of cows, so before they get over here and spook, actually one of them was looking our direction. We'll try to get him. He really is the only one. Every other elk here is a cow, but that is kind of the thing you see sometimes. And by the way, to go back to the beginning of what I was talking about and how the herds kind of becoming more mixed actually makes it, to me at least, more interesting. I never did hear a bugle. I heard a number of cow elk calls and just started to call them in because I thought odds were good there was a bull and it's not like this one is big, but the point remains that we actually get to encounter a bull rather than just seeing a bunch of cows that, as far as GM and stuff go, don't really get us anywhere. But as I'm sure you could guess based on the timestamp and the fact that we shot him with a rifle, that is going to be our last kill, 241.1. And, uh, yeah, that is going to do it for this hunt. Um, 12 kills, I think 11 elk, if I'm not mistaken, one cow. So 10 bulls over the course of a little over two hours. Definitely not bad, and at 367. That was really solid. I like the look of that. A couple more back tines, because usually the 400s have three, maybe no stickers, and we could have been really, really close there. So that's definitely encouraging going forward. And uh, maybe we'll do this again sometime in the near future. It was nice to get out and actually have a successful elk hunt. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.